Today I want to talk about the vacuum system on the PA44. We'll talk a little bit about how to draw it and uh, some of the interesting things about the vacuum system. This one is actually pretty easy. Uh, to begin with, uh, in any vacuum system, there's uh, really it's not too hard to understand. You've got ambient air outside. Let's try that again. There we go. You've got ambient air outside. What's going to happen to the air is it's going to be pulled into the airplane and it's going to do useful work, usually spinning a gyro, and then it's going to reach a pump, some sort of suction, and from there it's going to go overboard. So you've got outside air, useful work, some form of suction, and then out. So it's being sucked from outside, past the gyroscope, uh, through the pump, and then it's being dumped overboard. Uh, and that's the fundamentals of how a gyro works. Now, let's get into it in a little bit more detail. To begin with, uh, you have to have a source of outside air. So, uh, in the seminal, we take the outside air from uh, the behind the behind the cabin panel so it's going to be coming from uh, in the in the nose behind the panel from here it's going to pass through a filter because we want it to be clean air so uh, the air is going to get filtered and then from there it's going to go right on to a gyro instrument now the only gyro instrument that we actually have uh, in the seminal is the artificial horizon and so the artificial horizon is right here the air is going to come in, it's going to do work uh, and then it's going to move on and actually let's zoom in a little bit on this and take a look at it a bit more closely you've got the artificial horizon here and uh, the artificial horizon actually has got an opening here and it's got an opening here So. Uh, within the instrument, you've got a gyroscope itself, and the gyroscope looks kind of like that. And you've got a display face. The display face is over here. And uh, the gyro instrument spins, and through a system of gears and linkages and whatnot, it uh, the gears and linkages proceed off to the display. They cause the display to move and that's what's going to turn the face of the instrument. Now, more importantly to us is how the gyro spins. What we've got on the gyro is we've got vanes on the outside of the gyro. There's more than this, but I'm exaggerating here. And the vanes look something like that. What's going to happen is, as the air from outside uh, passes through the instrument, it's going to cause the gyro it's going to catch on these vanes right here and it's going to cause the gyroscope to spin because the air is catching these vanes and it's turning the gyro so the gyroscope here spins and uh, as the air is sucked past it again you've got suction here and you've got the air here the air is being sucked past these vanes causing the gyroscope to spin uh, as the air moves past it which again causes the display to activate and read properly. So there's a little bit of uh, that right there. And so on the artificial horizon, you can kind of picture inside the. Oops, try that again. You can picture inside the artificial horizon. You've got the gyro. On the gyro, you've got the veins, and on the veins, you've got air being sucked past the veins and causing the gyro to spin get rid of all of those guys there we go cool so that's the artificial horizon right there now the next place that the uh, flow of air is going to go is actually the most interesting one and it's going to go to a manifold check valve and the manifold check valve is going to look something like this and and actually we should probably explain that one a bit more too so we'll get rid of this right here and uh, let's pull this up a bit in more detail. Turn that off. 
So here we have the manifold, and here is air coming in uh, from the gyro instrument. So the air is on its way in to the instrument right here. Now, the way that this manifold check valve works is you've got something that looks kind of like this. Right there. And behind here you've got a catch plate. And over here you've got a catch plate. And then in the back here you have some exits. There we go. And from there we... Oh, let's try that again. Uh, yeah, we'll do this. And from here we go on again. Something kind of like that. A bit ugly, but uh, we'll do better next time. So, air is on its way in uh, from the top here, from the gyroscope instrument. What it's going to do is, uh, you've got actually something that looks a bit like this. You've got a couple of valves right here. And the valves, this is their closed position. Right like that. They're held in place by springs. There. So, under ordinary circumstances, the spring is pushing outward against the ball, and the ball is held in place tightly against this seal right here. So you've got no air movement uh, through this valve. Now, when the vacuum pump starts up, again, you've got suction here, and you've got suction here. What's going to happen is air is going to be drawn through these lines toward the suction. And when that happens, suction is going to cause the ball to be pulled against the spring, which is going to overcome spring tension and actually the ball is going to move backward something like this. So the ball will be held backward against the spring. The spring will be compressed here, kind of like that, and air will be able to flow from this point of higher pressure into the point of lower pressure uh, and similarly over on this side and I bet I can do this a bit easier if I just do this there we go yeah just like that there we go so because of reduced pressure here and higher pressure over here air is going to flow, air pressure is going to build and air is going to flow through the check valve and on towards the um, point of suction which is the, ac the vacuum pump. So the vacuum pumps are down here providing the suction. Now, cool. So what we've got is we've got a manifold here which can distribute air equally among all of the points of uh, vacuum suction. Cool. We can get rid of this too. Because we don't need that at the moment. Now, what we can also do here is we can put a takeoff in this area and we can say there will be an indicator here. And the indicator uh, Let's try that again. There we go. That's the vacuum indicator right there. And it says that we're between 4.8 and 5.2. Basically what it's doing is it's measuring the combined pressure inside this area right here. And as long as it's between 4.8 and 5.2, everyone's happy. Furthermore, what we can do is we can put a sensor right here and a sensor right here and we can attach them to small red balls or um, I'm not sure what to call them tabs I guess 
uh, indicators which are in the instrument uh, left and right. Now as long as there's suction here the uh, red indicator is going to be pulled out of the way. You won't be able to see it. If there's no suction here the red indicator is going to fall back into place and uh, you'll be able to you'll be able to see it to know which uh, vacuum pump has gone out. So let's talk about that. Let's say that the left hand vacuum pump for some reason gets clogged. So the vacuum pump is going to get clogged by something or other and no further suction can happen. Well, when that happens, the uh, and I guess I should have done it like this. There we go. So, this path is clogged, no further suction is occurring. Well, what happens? Number one, the uh, indicator is going to go red because there's no suction pressure right here so the indicator is going to become red because there's no suction occurring. Uh, the next thing that's going to happen is this spring right here will overcome the lack of vacuum pressure. So, as we mentioned before, oh, let's try that again, the ball will move back into place. And when that happens, there's going to be no more airflow in this section of the manifold. So all of the airflow here has been eliminated. Pressure's been equalized, and the spring is doing its job and sealing off this section of the chamber. So there's no more suction on this side. What happens then? Well, all of the suction gets picked up by the other vacuum pump, which means that all of the airflow is now occurring on this side of the system. And the airflow still continues. So, anytime that uh, one vacuum pump becomes blocked, fails, or for whatever reason cannot create suction, the check valve will close right here. Spring tension will force the valve closed. The indicator will go red, and the suction gauge, however, will still read normally as long as the other vacuum pump still continues to run. So that's a bit more about the manifold check valve. So if you wanted to draw that in here, you could say, uh, let's, let's do this. Oh, try again. Maybe we'll make it a bit more accurate. There we go. Something like that. Okay. Oh, crap. Alright, now. Get rid of that, and we'll get rid of this. Take these guys off. Take these guys off. There we go. And then we can put in uh, one of these right here. One of these right here. We've got the ball, which is sealing things up. We've got the base with a bit of a spring right there. We've got the indicator, which is right here. Back. Vacuum indicator. And then over on this side, We've got the flow of the various uh, uh, various airflow. What happens then is we continue on. to a series of regulators. And the regulators will come over here for. That did that wrong. Here we go. Now the regulator works almost exactly the same way. Uh, you've got a vacuum pump and a vacuum pump here. And what happens is uh, the vacuum pump just provides uh, suction. All it does is it takes air in and it dumps it overboard. So, air is uh, being dumped out all the time. The regulator is here to make sure that not too much air gets pulled through uh, and possibly does damage to the gyro. So, the regulators are set to 4.8 to 5.2 uh, inches of mercury. 
and then the same thing over here, 4.8 to 5.2. And the way that they work is, any time that the pump makes more or creates more suction than 4.8 to 5.2, say it's making 6 inches, which is too much, uh, the regulator will allow excess air in through a filter, and there is a filter here, but the regulator will allow filtered air in in order to bring the suction here down to 4.8 to 5.2. So it basically acts as a inlet valve or an intake valve uh, preventing excess suction from building up at the pumps. And that's really uh, the vacuum system for the PA44. Outside air is brought in through a filter, passes through the gyro instrument, the artificial horizon, spinning the gyro itself. It passes through the manifold check valve uh, out onto either side. The pressure is measured at that time by the vacuum indicator and it moves down through the regulator, through the pump, and then overboard. And then in the same way, uh, if the pump is pulling too much suction, the regulator is going to allow some extra air in uh, so as to ensure that the suction here is always going to be 4.8 to 5.2. Now inside the instrument, the manifold check valve, if one of the pumps uh, fails completely, then the spring right here is going to close and suction is going to be taken up on the other side by the other instrument, or excuse me, by the other pump. And that's the PA44 vacuum system.